soundtrack. Hello guys, this is Matt Brooks coming to you live from YouTube. We're here to teach you how to be a better athlete. Let me show you my awesome pumps. Pump, pump, pump. But you know how to make this better? I know you know how to make this better. The way to make this better is you need a supplement. So let me show you my supplement. Let me get my supplement here. Let me get uh, oh my God. All right. Now, clearly, I will be much stronger. So let me get up. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Yes. Turkey sandwich flavor supplement. All the cool kids are doing. Oh, yeah. Were you guys worried about him at all at the yes. end of that? Okay. We're doing. We're. We were doing cliffhangers now, okay? So yeah. just in case you were worried. <laughs> Edge of my seat. Hello, fellow YouTubers. <laughs> well, it's after a post-workout. It's time to eat that turkey sandwich. But here's a word of warning to you. Don't do more than you think you can do. I only get to eat that nice and beautiful turkey sandwich. And you're going to lift it up. You really... I, I, I can't... I can't. I can't even lift a turkey sandwich anymore. <laughs> Alright, we gotta fix him. <laughs> you can't use turkey sandwich, we're in trouble. So what was the differential that you came up with in terms of potential injuries? With biceps what? Okay, biceps tendonitis. What else? Okay, rotator cuff tear, I love it, yep. Okay. Labral tear. Super spinatus tendon rupture. Okay, so a, a tendon rupture. So one of the super spinatus, that would be a really good one to think about, right? Especially since we're doing shoulder <laughs> ultrasound today. Okay. So you can you can ultrasound all four of the rotator cuff muscles. We're not gonna ask you guys to do all four today. But so we can look at all of those tendons. What else? Okay, so bursitis, excellent. Oh, yeah, I love it. Okay, shoulder dislocation, right? So definitely shoulder dislocation could be on there. I thought the way his quote described his arm was really smooth. Okay. Yeah, that reminded me of Irv's palsy. But okay, yeah, yeah, so a nerve vascular nice. injury, sure, yeah, definitely. It would be, that would be, that would be an unusual way to do, but definitely you should think about that when you've got people with shoulder pain. It doesn't, you know, I think we all think musculoskeletal when you think shoulder pain, but they can be nerve vascular as well. And so you can get tripped up if you, if you narrow your differential too far down, you're like, oh, it's just a, a muscle or bone thing. It's like, awesome, I love it. So why do we injure our shoulders so much? What is it about shoulders that you see a lot of, why do we care that you know the rotator cuff muscle? What is it? What is it about the shoulder specifically that winds up with lots of injuries? Also, yes, exactly, right. So that's the shoulder is the most mobile joint in the body and you because it's so mobile you you don't have as much stability because you have more mobility okay so you learned all that stuff as you were learning your anatomy right so you learned about all the anatomy of the shoulder and how it's put together but you you know that's the next step is starting to think about well why does this matter physic functionally and one of the reasons functionally matters is because because you have so much muscle and tendon that's stabilizing the shoulder as opposed to ligaments you lose some of your joint stability in that process. So it's much easier to injure. Okay, so when you remember this, right? Exactly, like it's just like, you don't even have to think about it. It's just, exactly. you don't even have to, you're never gonna study this again because you know it, right? And then this, this is my, I love this, right? All right, this is flashback to, flashback, and then yeah, and then you're like, oh wait, now I've gotta remember it. Yeah. So, but there's tons of insertions on the shoulder that gives you all that mobility. And when you think about, okay, how is the shoulder put together? That is going to help you in creating your differential diagnosis. So why are you? Why did you learn anatomy? What was the whole point of you getting to having to remember all this minutia? So you can, yeah. So yeah, everyone's. I know everyone. I can hear you thinking. Just so I can pass step one and get on. <laughs> I can just hear. That is. One thing, but realize also that anatomy is one way to help you refine a differential diagnosis. So the reason we're giving you these cases, the reason we want you to kind of engage is first, it's fun and learning. Sh you should be having fun in medical school, especially, I know, 
especially for you guys, the second year at this point, you know, no one is having that much fun. It should be fun. And this is why we teach ultrasound, because we think it's, it's fun, but also is it because it continues to stretch your learning in a new way. But anatomy is great for just minutia and putting things on tests, but it's also really helpful for refining your differential diagnosis. So if I have a musculoskeletal injury, I can kind of start thinking about like the hundred different things that go, go wrong. And I might get lost in the weeds pretty quickly. Or I can try to organize my differential in a way where, okay, now I can think systematically. Like what are the things that can go wrong in the shoulder? So if we you, we're going to use anatomy, how would you break down the shoulder anatomically so you could structure differential diagnosis? So what makes up the shoulder? Big picture thing. There's no, there's a big clue on that. What's one of the things? Okay, so humerus falls into what, but what overall category would you Bones, okay, awesome, bones, yeah, back to the basics, okay, bones, so we have bones, what else? Muscles. Muscles, muscles attached to bones by? Tendons. Okay, so we've got bones, muscles, tendons, what else? Ligaments. Ligaments, okay, and then the fifth one I usually say, which is kind of a catch-all, and I know anatomically it's probably not correct, but for me, from a clinical standpoint, it's joint space stuff. So synovial fluid, bursa, all those other things that kind of exist in the joint space. And then neurovascular definitely would fall in there, and you kind of put neurovascular as a another separate category as well. Okay, so if we if we do it that way, and when I when I approach a patient and I'm thinking, is the bony problem, is the muscle muscle tendon problem, is the ligament problem, is the joint space problem, is it a neurovascular problem? And then I can go down my list and say, <coughs> did I think about all these things? And that's great because then when I walk out of the room and I miss the person who has a you know a vertebral artery dissection or a subclavian artery dissection and they have no pulse in their arm because I forgot, oh, neurovascular is part of that, my checklist, that helps me a lot clinically being like, okay, these are the big picture items I have to hit. Rather than remembering the 100 things that can go wrong in the shoulder, I just remember five. I'm, I'm an ED doctor, five is a, as far as I go. All right, mm -hmm. probably, if you get to number six, I'm, I'm worthless. So this is kind of organizing, muscles, tendons, ligaments, joint space, bone. Right? That's kind of how I organize that differential diagnosis so I can think through that process. So that is part of the reason to do anatomy. It's also really helpful when I'm thinking, okay, now I'm gonna use my ultrasound. Now I wanna, how do I analyze those different things? So let's go through a couple of these things from an ultrasound standpoint, and I'll walk you through how I would examine them. And now remember, this is what we're trying to do here is not teach you how to be a sports medicine physician yet. Uh, but really what we want you to do is kind of think through, okay, how do I, as a clinician, think about how would I analyze a bone, a muscle, a tendon? So the three images we wanted you guys to get were, does anyone remember? Biceps tendon. Okay, so biceps tendon. So we want to do biceps tendon. So this is tendon muscle. So we'll start biceps tendon. So I'm going to start ultrasounding his shoulder here. Again, remember, when you're ultrasounding, don't feel like you have to be exactly in the right spot. So Becky gave you those images of like where to put the probe. Use your anatomy. So if I put the probe here and I'm looking and I see a big bright structure in the middle of the screen, what do you think that big bright structure is? <coughs> humerus. Okay, right. So you said bone. You guys may, you know, you know that bone is bright with dark shadow behind it. So that's humeral head because of where my probe is. So now if I if I'm looking for the biceps, the long head of the biceps tendon, I'm looking for that. I'm going to look where. Where does it sit? Yeah, what's that notch called? So, right here. Right, so here's what's the, the big, the bigger tubercle is the greater, all right, greater tuberosity, I say greater tuberosity, and then we'll, lesser. And then the bicipital groove right here, right? There's the groove in between. And what's the and there's the tendon. So there's the long head of the biceps tendon sitting in the in the group. You want to see that? So I'm working my way from humeral head and then finding greater tuberosity, lesser tuberosity, and then looking for the long head of the biceps and sitting in between those. So kind of orienting myself anatomically there. Now there's the that's the tendon short axis. I can also turn the tendon and I can go long axis. I can trace, here's that, here's that tendon then in long axis, I can trace that tendon down and look as the tendon then, so here's my, <coughs> here's my tendon, and you can see those tendon fibers, and then I can trace it down as it goes into, 
into the biceps muscle itself. Everyone see that? All right. So that's muscle tendon. The other great thing about the shoulder is it's not, and especially about ultrasound, is again, the shoulder and the ultrasound, you can be dynamic, you're not static. So if I, if I want to know what's wrong with the shoulder and I put him in MRI, I get a static image of where his shoulder is. But in, in, in ultrasound, I can do dynamic things. So I can see how his humeral head rotates. Right? So if I was worried about a biceps tendon tear, I can not only look at the biceps tendon tear, but I can ask him to flex and extend his bicep, and I can look at how that tendon, how that tendon actually functions as he's flexing and extending. So it's, you know, I have a very much more dynamic image of that. So you guys said rotator cuff is mouth, right? Where we constantly think of rotator cuff muscles. That's the thing you learn a ton about is rotator cuff muscles. So if we're looking at rotator cuff muscles, so we can, I said we can ultrasound all of them. The one you guys are doing, which one? Remember? Supraspinatus. Supraspinatus. Okay, so where's supraspinatus sit? Okay, behind. So yeah, so it's uh, it's on the scapula, right? In on the, I would say inside the scapula. So if I come this way, <coughs> the scapula gets in my way, right? So now I'm going to have to, as the supraspinatus comes out and attaches to the humeral head, I'm going to have to figure out how to find the supraspinatus. So supraspinatus attaches right here, right? Right around the lesser tuberosity. Is that right? Subscap Sorry, subscapular. All right. So, scap yeah, subscap on the lesser tuberosity. So if it's subscapular, so if I, am, if I can find his lesser tuberosity, I can have him externally rotate. Then I can find subscap here. Everyone see that? So I can't see it at all. I can externally rotate, and there's subscap tendon. Now, the, most of the subscapularis is down deep, kind of below where I can see it, but you can start to see where the tendon kind of joins into the muscle down here. So that's your second image. If I want to go from here, I'm just going to externally rotate, and that's where you guys are going to find subscap tendon right here. So that's the other view you've been looking at. All right, so we've talked about muscle, we've talked about tendon. What else are we missing? What other things do we have to look at? Ligament. Ligament, okay. So the third view that you're asked to get is kind of a, is a superior view looking down into the joint space. So if I'm looking down here, here's my acromion. What do you think that is there? If I'm looking straight down, what bone is this? All right, so that's your third view here. Here's humeral head, here's your acromion. So what's sitting, what's the humeral head sitting in? Joint space, yeah. So that's the humeral head. What's the what's that joint space called? The the, the ball, you know, the, the cup for the ball. Is the glenoid, okay. So I can see a little bit of joint space here just analyzing this view. So we can look at joint space that way. If what's what's another we so we've gotten joint space, we've gotten muscle, we've got we've gotten tendon, what are we missing? What other on my list? Okay, so nerve vascular. So we're not gonna we I for the sake of um, not getting too deep into the weeds, I won't spend too much time on neurovascular ultrasound today. But you can certainly ultrasound nerves and blood vessels pretty easily. But what other, and so neurovascular, but then what other? What other thing makes up joints? We said the, the shoulder, the shoulder doesn't, itself doesn't have very many of these. Or I, would, I shouldn't say the shoulder. But the humor, the humerus and the glenoid doesn't have a ton of yeah, so what do we, what specifically though, how, why, do, why can I do this with my shoulder but not with my ankle? So I have ligaments, right? So we don't have as many ligaments in the shoulder, in the, what you think of as a shoulder joint, but there's another joint that helps make up the shoulder. What's that joint? AC joint. Okay, so AC joint is all ligaments, right? All right, so if I'm going to look at his AC joint here, you guys see that here's my AC joint here. So here's my clavicle. So I'm, here's my, Here's what I'm following. The, see that bright white line? Clavicle, clavicle. Head of the clav clavicular head there. Acromion. Can everyone see that? Head of the clavicle here, acromion here. So there's my AC joint. So if it's all ligaments, so it'd be pretty stable if I'm pulling down and trying to stretch his AC joint. Should that move very much? No. All right. Do you see very much movement there? No. Okay, so he's got a pretty stable AC joint. 
so here's I'll follow so I'm on the cla I'm on his clavicle now I'm following it out until I'm getting to the head of the clavicle and there's a chromium right there so chromium joint space clavicle you see that so you actually can see down in the joint space a little bit if the joint's open everyone see that bone bright white bone a little gap another bone so there's my AC joint okay so the last thing is, if I really want to know a little bit more about joint space, because someone said dislocation, which is my, which I would say from a, from an ED standpoint is one of the things we deal with a, very commonly is someone comes in, they can't use their shoulder, and we're trying to decide is this a shoulder dislocation or not. Usually, clinically, you can tell some of that. But if I want to see where the humeral head sits in the glenoid, if I zoom out a little bit, so I'm going to use the, this isn't one of your views, but just to give you guys a sense of how this, how we can then use ultrasound this, in this process as well. So if I start here, if I want to find his humeral head in the glenoid fossa, I'm going to start back here, find the scapula, come out, and I'm going to find his humeral head sitting in the glenoid. So go ahead and everyone see humeral head here, scapula here. Go ahead and rotate. You guys see that? Humeral head, here's scapula. <coughs> and then here's humeral head. You guys see how that's that I can see the can you see that head, humeral head moving? And it's sitting in that in that glenoid fossa in the scapula. So you can see how closely aligned scapula is with humeral head. Alright, so that's shoulder in the in the socket. Right? I don't have very much by design, I don't have a ton of joint space there. Alright. So that's muscle, tendon, joint, ligaments. So this is if this is our guy's injury, what are you most clinically most worried about that that dislocated arm looks like when he comes in to see you? Bicep. Okay, bicep tendon tear, right? So, so we showed I showed you how to look at the bicep tendon. So this is what, and I couldn't find a good video unfortunately, but this is that long axis view where you can see the tendon fibers here, but you can't see where's the tear of the tendon fibers there. So we could see a tear of the tendon fiber. What do you think if I asked him to flex his bicep or extend his bicep muscle? What do you think would happen to that tear if we were looking at it under ultrasound? <coughs> yeah, so it'd get bigger or smaller, bigger or smaller, as he's trying to use, it, engage that bicep. Right? If he only tears the long head, you guys know anatomically, right, that he's got another attachment, so he could probably still engage that muscle to some extent. But you could, you know, so just functionally asking him to do this, if he hasn't torn the whole bicep, you might not necessarily be able to, on exam, just say, well, it's definitely a tear of the long head. But again, if you can find that tear and then have him engage the bicep muscle, you can look at that tear dynamically. All right, so this is another AC joint here, remember? So, so here's, our, uh, uh, here's our clavicle, here's our acromion. So we said that should be a relatively stable joint, okay? So if, if this is what happens when I put some stress on the AC joint, what do you think? Is that, is that normal? No, all right. All right, so this is, you know, this is someone who's torn all the, I can't, you can get a sense of the ligaments, but I don't need to necessarily see the ligaments. I can just say that's definitely a, you know, that's someone who's pretty much destroyed their AC joint. Okay. All right. We talked about you know here's a humeral head fracture again. So looking at disruption in the cortex. So there's a humeral head fracture. This is the same view, just used a curved probe. So zoom more zoomed out view. But here's scapula. Here's humeral head. Humeral head should sit in the scapula. So the humeral head should actually be in here. So this is a shoulder dislocation, where my humeral head is now out of the socket, okay? So here's again, scapula, humeral head, and you can see in this video actually now we're injecting some lidocaine into that space where the shoulder should be. So I can inject some lidocaine in there, numb up the shoulder if I'm gonna relocate it. Help, you know, people, people have a ton, when they dislocate their shoulder, it's all that muscle spasm that holds that humeral head out of the socket. And so you really have to relax the muscles and sometimes just giving some local anesthetic can really get people pain-free enough that you can relocate the shoulder without having to do a lot more. So again, 
I can look at this location. So this is, I would say for me, in, a, in an emergency department setting, the thing I see most commonly is folded disc location sometimes. I will certainly see rotator cuff tears and things like that, but the thing that's kind of an emergency condition where it's like, I need to figure out where their shoulder is and how to put it back, is again, finding, here's again, this is the other shoulder, so here's scapula, here's humeral head. And so this humeral head should be sitting right there. And I'm going to, now and this is us putting a needle in there and then injecting some lidocaine in it. Right, so you can see dislocation as well. Questions about any of that? So hopefully this kind of helps you guys realize how, you know, some of the anatomy you're learning, some of the pathology that people have been talking about, but how it kind of all comes together, especially when you're doing ultrasound, how you can augment the stuff you already learned in physical diagnosis and just thinking about how do I diagnose people.